Hello again, so we are keep going on with the tutorial of ONDB and now that is going to be the third part of the uh, demonstration of how to use ONDB and I'm still uh, demonstrating the use of uh, results and statistical study uh, the other part will be uh, demonstrating how to enter patients and audiometric data but at the moment I think it's interesting to focus on uh, results just to emphasize or the power of this uh, program. So I have already demonstrated uh, how to use it for stapy surgery and I'm going to use it for um, studying the um, osculoplasty and tympanoplasty. So the, of course the beginning will be exactly the same. We go back to this first screen and I will click on surgery results and then select uh, the specific pathology I want to study which at the moment will be uh, cholecotitis surgery without uh, cholesteatoma, so that's this first line. So now the program will, as usual, open the second screen, uh, another window with, as you can see now, appearing at the top, uh, the selection that we've made, which means uh, tympanoplasty without cholesteatoma, so that is going to be exactly the same presentation as previously described on the left you can see of course the pre and post-op audio if I click there we also have the sex ratio number of patients and number of operated years the beginning of the study and the end of the study the current time and also the age minimum is 5 maximum was 95 on the right again you can see uh, the uh, pre-operative uh, uh, status which means in terms of uh, airborne gap, airborne gap uh, within 10, 20, 30 dB and also the mean airborne gap always of course only pre-op because at the moment I have not selected uh, post-op hearing for soul and outcomes and in the middle again again you remember I demonstrated also the use of four frequencies 0.5, 1, 2 and 4 kilohertz and as previously said I can uh, unselect uh, each frequency if I want and study only a specific one now, in the middle, we still have the same type of tabs, uh, which are already pre-entered in this program, but as I will demonstrate later on in a different part, you can easily change everything. But if you look to the stage, the first tab, there's a little bit of a difference with uh, compared to autosclerosis. We have, a, we have three uh, stage of surgery, primary, revision, as usual, but also we have a second stage. Specifically, for example, when you have tympanosclerotic stapes fixation with uh, simultaneous tympanic membrane perforation, we all know that we have to stage the surgery. So that was important to separate things. So if you click on second stage, you will, of course, select only the second stage. Uh, the tab number two, which is called clinical, are related, is related to clinical items. Uh, like, uh, for example, all the description we already made with uh, uh, the previous demonstration I made. Um, it could be uh, things like unique year, including in a, I created a, a special it item called special, it, specifically if we have a unique year, which means uh, uh, the other ear is dead or something like that. And uh, all these things have been pre-entered, but I created a new one. Uh, so you can change that at any time during the, the use of the program. Um, it's also definition, uh, the presentation of the uh, things related to otoscopy, of course, because this will be uh, related to the presentation of the tympanic membrane. Again, I'm sorry for the, you can see it's pretty slow, but again, it's because I, I'm recording at the same time, so this is decreasing the speed of the computer. So uh, here you can see the description of the otoscopy because it depends if you want to study retraction tympanic membrane or tympanic membrane perforation without, with or without stenosis of the external auditory canal. So as I previously explained, each line can be, uh, separate, can be studied separately. That's the same thing with uh, each tab. Now, if it's also you can see the tympanic membrane perforation, if you click on tympanic membrane perforation, you can select the type of perforation that you want to study because, of course, we all know that the results 
could not be the same if you have a posterior perforation compared to anterior perforation. So this must be selected separately and studied separately. And also, so depending on the etiology of the tympanic membrane perforation, if it's a traumatic or post-burning or things like this. So that's important to be able to separate uh, each line and to study them separately. So it's the same also with, it's important thing with the, the, the line here uh, called uh, associated pathology, because of course uh, you have to define wh why you are performing sometimes ossicular reconstruction. So if, if we speak about associated pathology, uh, this line is particularly important, of course, in panosclerosis, because of course the results, again, if you have a stapes fixation due to tympanosclerosis, this might impair the result, and it's not the same as if you perform uh, uh, regular ossicloplasty for eroded incus, for example, that's completely different. And you can see there's a line ossicular chain. If you, it means that this is related to all type of uh, ossicular, chain, ossicular chain problem, including tympanosclerosis, by the way. But it, it, and then you will go to uh, surgery, and then you will have to define exactly uh, what kind, type of problem you find, and then you can select each line. So let's go to surgery now. So here we got, we got. Uh, I click on surgery, and we have this line uh, associated uh, pathology. Uh, in which uh, th there are many type of problems that I've encountered in my series of 4,000 cases. So it's only related, to, of course, to the different type of problem encountered, but not only the ossicular chain, because, of course, it could be, you see, TM lateralization, it could be a partial incus erosion, blunting, uh, many things. So again, each line will be uh, or could be studied separately, uh, and specifically uh, related to, to ossicular chain uh, status. Uh, so I will show you, of course, when you have an eroded incus, you can uh, select that and then you can study the um, uh, reconstruction according to the findings. Uh, for example, you can see this line, eroded dislocated incus, two, more than 2,000 cases, separate from malus incus ankylosis. And of course, sometimes you can have uh, simultaneous eroded incus plus the malus incus ankylosis. So again, as I demonstrated on, on the previous tutorial, if you click to remove first, like this one, then uh, you click on malus incus ankylosis and then you can remove from the eroded dislocated incus the malus uh, ankylosis uh, simultaneous. So, or you can study separately malus uh, or incus ankylosis separately to eroded incus. Now, same for the uh, surgical technique. Uh, uh, many other items were entered, for example, the procedure. Now, if you go to tab number four, ossicloplasty, that's really interesting. And there is a specific point here that I want to discuss. I use myself uh, this type of classification uh, called Austin Cartouche, but I know there are, there are many other classification and it will be easy for you if you use another type of classification to create uh, inside this ossiculoplasty tab, a specific line with your personal classification, and then you will find it on the program. And I will show you again, this needs to be performed when you go to uh, the control panel or to UNDB preferences, but it's on the control panel that you can enter a new uh, classification. Now, you see there are different groups, so that's important because we all know that again, uh, we need to compare apple to apple when we uh, uh, create uh, publications. And so it will be important if you want to uh, present your results when the stape is and uh, malis are present, which is defined by Austin Cartouche Group A, uh, differently than Austin Cartouche Group C, where there's only the stape is present, etc. And also completely different when we have the stape is fixed. So again, if you click to one line, then you go and you a specific study uh, each line. You can see that I've also entered uh, the type of prosthesis that I was using. But again, as you will see, uh, during entering a new patient, if you are using a new prosthesis, then you can enter immediately. Um, when you enter the patient, you can enter the name of the new prosthesis easily by yourself. And this will be uh, stored in the program forever. Um, so, of course, if you click to post-op, then you go to the results. 
But it's interesting also that in the same time of tap of osteoculoplasty, what you can see here is the position of the prosthesis, which is really important because sometimes you use a torp, but the torp can be positioned between the tympanic membrane two and, and a stapes uh, foot plate or between uh, the malleus to the mobile foot plate. And there's a lot of different combinations. I will show you that. But for example, if, even when you have a, a malleus which is still present, some surgeon would prefer not to use the malleus, so that's important to do that. So let's just uh, click on, on a very easy demo. So let's go for, again, uh, selecting uh, the first stage. I go, I'm going to click on first stage. And I will click to primary surgery first. So the program will select only the primary surgery. You can see now 1,937 cases. And let's say, for example, I want to study my results um, in case of uh, malleus present and uh, status present. So I will go to tab 4 and uh, I will go to Austin Cartouche Group and I will select malleus present and status present. So I click on that and the program will select only the 683 cases. So of course I can publish that and I can already click on this uh, box here, 634 available post-op data. But let's say I want to make it a little bit more tricky and a little more specific and a little, make a little bit more accurate. And I want to study my results in case of malleus ankylosis in this group of malleus and staples present. So I will go to surgery and then to tap surgery and I will go to associated pathology and then I will click to malleus incus ankylosis, which means 236 cases. So let's click on that. So the program now will select only the 246 46 cases. And let's say that, um, well, I don't want to have this eroded malice here because that could make uh, maybe the uh, uh, surgery uh, more tricky or I mean it would may include, in, in, uh, put some bias in the, in, in the study. So I will remove this line. So I will click first on remove and then click to eroded malleus. So this will remove the two cases of eroded malleus. Um, let's go also to remove this hypermobile malleus, you know, what is defined as, as loose malleus that can be associated to the, to the increase ankylosis. So I just want to remove that and I click to uh, hypermobile malleus. Um, eroded increase doesn't create any problem. So I will keep it there. And let's say that uh, I remove this incus incudio malleus joint dislocation. I just want to be sure that I am studying only the malleus incus ankylosis with or without eroded incus, no problem, because we can have an eroded incus with a, a fixed uh, incus or malleus. So that's not going to change anything. Um, you can see this uh, associated surgical technique. Uh, so it's clear we have two, 232 cases. And if you look to this line, the surgical technique, I've performed 232 osteoplasty during this uh, series. And uh, we have also this line, which is important, associated surgical technique. You know that I've created a, and published new techniques like uh, malleus location and elastic bending. So let's say I want to study, um, Let's go first to osteoculoplasty. So I'm going to click on line four, state uh, tab four. So we are in group A. You can see all the results, are, all the specific uh, selections are there. So we are group A. And uh, well, there are different types of processes that are used. You know that sometimes in the past I was using PORP, but now I'm using more and more TORP. So of course, this needs to be studied comparatively. So you want to I want to study my results comparatively between PORPs and TORPs. So of course, we need to make a first selection of, let's say, TORP. So I don't want to use this PORP, so I will remove all the PORP, everything which is not a TORP. So I click on Remove, I click to PORP. Uh, then I remove again this one. I also want to remove this autograft partial and this one which is uh, only only one that I was using because I didn't like it so I, I'm going to remove that 
And now we all only have a torque, okay? So we have 134 torques, which were used in Austin cartouche group A. You also have the length of the torque, which is important. When I do revision, I like to know uh, what was my uh, previous length when it, which is, when it is personal failure, of course. Now, let's go back to surgery. And uh, you see, I have uh, these two associate surgical technique. Of this series of one in 134 cases, I've performed silastic bending in one in 124 cases and malleus relocation in 118 cases. So, well, I can select only this line. This will be to study my results when I use the silastic bending technique and I will be able to say by removing uh, silastic bending technique in a separate way. So I, then com I can compare inside the same group with the same prosthesis with or without silastic bending. So let's go, I'm going to click on silastic bending. And you see in this group, I have performed uh, the use of silastic bending in 124 cases and my location one, one, 108 cases. And now I'm going to click on with pre and post-op. So of course you can describe that. You can export these things by exporting data. Then you export the pre-operative data. Now I'm going to click on with pre and post-op audio on the left and now we have 117 available data post-op on this Austin cartouche group A malus and status present with the in case of malus incus ankylosis with silastic bending and the use of torp so we have now all post-op on, on the right uh, a bone gap within 10 db 20 and 30 db and over 20 db you also have the mean a bone gap pre and post-op you also have the mean bond conduction and air conduction pre and post-op, pre and post-op, pre and post-op. That's the same thing. And of course, on the left, still the same. We have the age. Minimum is uh, like uh, 23, 20, 22.9 months, uh, years and uh, uh, close to 81 year uh, old for the older one. You have the sex ratio here. Everything you need to publish for a publication or regular publication. And of, of course, the follow-up again, 0.9, the minimum follow-up, maximum 174.2 months, and the mean follow-up. And again, if you want to select the result at one year, as I demonstrated, you're going to click there and let's say put nine months minimum and uh, 18 months. And then the program will select only the available data at one year according to the American Academy guideline. This is my personal choice as I said. I define one year between 9 and 18 months just to have uh, uh, enough cases, 51 cases there and then you can export that and then you get uh, quite a good result.